This is an introduction to the fabrication and manufacture of the Kenya Ceramic Jiko, filmed at the Designers Workshop. The Kenya Ceramic Jiko is one of the most successful improved stove programs fully designed in East Africa. The following footage is a condensed overview of the two to three hours it takes to manufacture one high quality stove by a skilled artisan. Cut out the templates. Using pre-measured templates, trace the shapes onto the sheet metal and cut out the parts. Making the door. Make the hinge using a small piece of wire and rolling the tabs on the door. For exact size hinge, score the strip of sheet metal in the gap between the tabs and cut the piece along the scored line. Then fold the strip back on itself twice and then under and around the wire. Snip the tab to size and prefix two rivets for fixing to the body of the KCJ. Latch for the door. Okay. The door hinge is made with a simple latch mechanism. This allows the user to open and close the door safely, which regulates the temperature of the stove. Add a bracing strip behind the latch to keep the latch flush with the door and the body of the stove. A simple rivet fixes the latch and acts as a pivot. Making the legs. The legs are made from a slightly thicker gauge of steel and by adding a 90 degree bend to the edges of the legs you will increase their strength. This way the stove will carry more weight and will last longer. Roll the top of the legs over themselves twice to hold the pot rest. Flatten the other end of the legs to make a foot pad. Prefix two rivets onto the end under each pot rest holder. Handles. The handles are also made from a thicker gauge of steel. After bending, avoid flattening the handles completely as this has two benefits. The handle will be stronger and will carry more weight and the air gap will keep it cooler so it's easier to move a hot stove. Bend the end of the handles at a slight angle so it will sit flush with the stove. Prefix two rivets to each end for attaching later. Prepare a base plate. The base plate can be of a light gauge of sheet metal to save money, as it's not subject to as much stress as the other parts of the Jiko. Affix three equally spaced tabs to the base plate of the Jiko, which will later be used to attach the legs. Create two inverted seams to connect together. This is how you seal them together. Cut a hole for the door. The size of the door opening is critical for the performance of the stove. If it is too large, it will waste charcoal. If it is too small, it will constrain the fire and make the stove cook slowly. By using the technique to cut the door opening, you create soft edges around the door opening that are less likely to cut someone's hands and it does not use any extra material. Assembling the parts together. By using the correct width of the joint you save on material while also providing the correct strength for the Jiko. The parts should fit together seamlessly, emphasizing the need for using templates to get the correct measurements each time.
Bend and beat the metal into spheres. By hand, roughly bend the body panels into a cylindrical shape and seal the final joints together. Using a leaf spring, hammer the cylinder into a perfect shape. Assembling the Jiko together, using your ball peen hammer, shape a flange on the body tops to allow the two parts to be beaded together. For a stronger joint, align the seams of the body parts together. Choose three equidistant points on the lip to slightly turn in. This will allow you to place one section in the other and make the process of beading easier. Check the joints are well rounded and smooth on the inside. Attaching the door. Prefix a rivet into the latch receiver and now bend the door to conform to the shape of the stove. Line up the door with the door opening and rivet a hinge to the body of the stove. Once the door is fixed, you can now align and fix the latch receiver to accept the latch. Then test the door to make sure it opens and closes smoothly. Attach the base and the legs. During the final assembly of the full metal cladding, the accuracy you applied earlier begins to pay off. Take advantage of that by saving a rivet and by using one of the legs to attach a rivet that also attaches to the handle. Make sure rivets are well set for rigidity and durability. Fixing pot rests. Fix the pot rest onto the stove and bend it flush by hand. Making the ceramic liner. The potter takes about 2 to 3 kilos of the clay mixture and rolls it into a ram's head shape. The mixture is shoved into the bottom of an open mold and pressed firmly in with his palm. The fist is sunk through the center. The clay is drawn up to the edge of the mold with your hands formed like a scoop. The edge is then cut and trimmed. When the proper inner form has been obtained, the molded liner is then removed by turning the mold upside down and resting the liner on its rim and pulling the mold upwards. The 15 centimeter diameter grate has 19 of these holes punched in rows of four, five, and six for a medium sized liner. Don't punch the holes too close to the edge, but leave sufficient space between the holes so the liner doesn't break when punched. Typically for most areas, process and dry the clay in the traditional potter's manner. Shade dry the liners until they are warm to the touch. When you are firing them, make sure you keep them hot enough for the required amount of time, about 7 to 800 Celsius for more than 6 hours. Please see the manual for more information about kilns and the firing procedure. Assembly involves anchoring the ceramic liner firmly into the metal cladding. The best way to do this is to coat the outside of the surface of the liner with a thin trowel using a mixture of one part cement to four parts sand. Sink the liner into the metal cladding and then let it dry a bit and then smooth off the top of the cement.
Painting the Jiko. Depending on what type of material you use and how you market your stove, you can choose to paint or not to paint them. We choose black because it reduces the amount of cleaning of the stove.